2003 Opal Vectra 1.8 liter. All right, I hope it's not too windy today. Uh, one of the shops I usually go to, they let me work there. Uh, they're closed for certain world reasons right now, which I can't talk about. But on the good side, uh, I do have, my wife sent me some extra tools to help us out here in Germany. I'm D.E. Nichols. I work on cars, upgrade them, motorcycles sometimes. Now, just you know, this uh, particular car, uh, you're going to have to watch my stages of oxygen sensor death to see why to watch this or why I'm replacing this oxygen sensor. It's very subtle. Well, it's usually subtle. Um, so it'll get stuck rich. It'll get stuck lean. We're talking about the upstream oxygen sensor. This is a, this is a one oxygen sensor show uh, for the upstream. And uh, it doesn't have any codes or anything. But when it gets stuck or it gets stuck rich or lean, the rear oxygen sensor is helping you know that it's lying. In fact, it occasionally uh, stalls out. I think maybe too much fuel gets stuck in the chambers or something. So we're going to change this oxygen sensor today. Uh, I have no doubt about the heat side of it. I would have a code for that most likely. I could test that, but there's other videos that I've done. You can check that out on. Uh, on my Nissan Frontier video, I'll put that up on the eye right next to my, right next to me there, or on the opposite side, whichever it is. But anyway, we know it needs to be changed, and uh, hopefully the part fits. I've had a little struggle with that with over here in Germany finding the right parts. But this is a Delphi, and the connection looked right, so it should fit. All right, so I've compared them before I opened the package, so we'll, and there was no issue to return it, and. That definitely is identical, it's just exactly what I thought for this year. I think it's like an 03 Opal 1.8 liter. But in the States, it's got a lot of times these engines are going to be in other things like uh, Cavaliers and stuff like that. It's an EcoTech engine, it's pretty simple. So that looks all correct. This is a much larger wire, unless this wire opens up more. So the routing may have to be different. You do want to make sure you keep it off the exhaust. Uh, it looks like p people have messed with this before because everything's zip tied in. Not a big deal. Okay, so I have a bit of a setup here. I have my oxygen sensor open type where it's off to the side. Um, they do make other types, but what's nice about this is it can get you around a corner. Uh, this one works most of the time. It's one of my favorites because it has a star pattern in it and allows you to change the degrees a little bit at a time in order to get it changed. Now, I actually drove the car thinking that shop would be open. And with it a little bit warm, it's actually easier to remove an oxygen sensor most of the time. Using a couple extensions here. I'm working on a Opal 1.8 liter. That oxygen sensor's been in there for its entire life. It might get stuck in there a little bit. So I might have to use some other techniques like tightening it down. <coughs> See if it'll get it loosened up. Maybe it will have to be cold. It's very cold outside. That won't take long. It was spring. Got cold again. <clears throat> ah, there we go. Popped it. All right. That's good. That's good. Now, when that happened, it actually got slightly out of the correct position that it should be in. Oh, lost a tool pop it, get it loose. So you're going to have to, because it's surrounded by this heater zone, I know this is a little bit in the way for what you're seeing here, but basically I'm moving it and turning it, and because of that star pattern, oh it's so easy now I can do it by hand already. Oh I love that, it happens a lot here in Germany, I don't know why, where things just don't seem rusted together like you think with the salted roads and such. That looks like that's going to come off real nice. If you take a look, I've got that loose. Uh, this actually clips in just underneath here. And on this side, we have a little clip. It looks like this clip has already been messed with before. I'm going to do that off camera. Uh, you're not going to see it very well. But basically, I'm just pushing on the release in the center. And I need my other hand to pull on the bottom and make sure this new one's gonna fit before I go too crazy. 
It's off camera. I, I burnt myself because I took my gloves off so I could record. Uh, you're welcome for the accidental sacrifice. Uh, so I'm slightly concerned how different this new one versus this old one looks. But I know Delphi is designed to work with GM engines. Uh, and this may be a GM product, it says, but it just says it's made by Siemens. That's a 5WK9-1701, and I'm replacing it with a Delphi ES20282-12319. It's pretty different, but it cross-leveled the same, at least according to uh, a German database that I worked up on. So, so uh, just free and clear. Uh, brand new from GM. It already has some anti seize in there to deal with the fact that we're dealing with, you know, some uh, rusty situations here. Uh, sometimes you might have more difficulty than I had. Uh, so I just tried to brawn it out, and when that didn't work, I gave it a good pop because shock is important to get things uh, broken apart sometimes. Um, this new oxygen sensor it doesn't even want to fit, does it? Okay, they look. Other than the fact that this, well, anyway, GM updates stuff sometimes. Threads look the same size, so I just have to let go of the last nine hours of work, settle in, and thread that in nice and smooth. There we go. See, sometimes having a flat on the plane is not quite like you'd expect. Being real grateful that it's not too exceptionally windy, I hope. And I see that it doesn't have this little clip on it from the old one. So get some gloves on, protect myself against burning myself again. And we're just gonna pop that over from the old one in about the same spot as the new one was at, or the old one was at to the new one. So that'll work underneath our engine cover. Now, I, I knew I was tempted by those uh, torque, uh, Torx. And I did not ask my wife to send me Torx because I thought, oh, the shops will be open. But with the fear everyone's having, we don't have access to the shop. So this is just supposed to hook up on there, but I see that it's actually slipped down from where it was. So I need to work that up a little higher because that's supposed to hook up on there. There's this little tab right here that's supposed to hook up onto. So normally make it like your life easier and take this off, but uh, like I said, I should ask the wife for Torx. So off camera with two hands, I'm gonna get that underneath there and continue the next step. So one more tip for you. I actually had this on upside down, so you wanna flip it this way so that this will clip up on there nice and easy. So keep it up off the exhaust and then you should just about plug right in, but I see there's one more tab over here to keep it up off the exhaust and nice and safe. And then that'll plug into there and it's gonna have a hard time reaching because it's not the original connection point. This is originally a little bit higher. So you might have to be very, you might have to be very careful with where your wire is sitting because after you put it in this clip, I see it doesn't wanna reach, but understand this clip might have broken and they tie this in on it where normally it's up at this position. So I'll figure out a way to get that even if I have to cut this. Now you're gonna to have to promise me that you push this together until you have a satisfying click. Other than that, you should be good to go. Um, it's totally unnecessary for this to have a zip tie on here. I mean, I suppose some people might worry that this is close to that, but you have to understand, the oxygen sensor is in the exhaust. Um, it's designed to take some heat, all right? Now, this old one, I'm gonna have to cut this silly zip tie off that it's not needed, and uh, she'd be good to go. All, all they really need to do is make sure it's on these clips, and those wires would stay safe. All right, so if you're looking at these graphs, at first we have an oxygen sensor that's reading. I mean, I ought to take a screenshot of that. And then right after that, the oxygen sensor like flat lines and the short-term fuel churn goes way up to rich. And then once it starts to read, uh, you can see that um, 
the short-term field trim starts to come down because it had already learned this new oxygen sensor. Right now it's doing a learning process. So let it idle for a while, take it for a little drill to drive, make sure everything is behaving right. And uh, short-term fuel trim went back to zero. So I know that everything's in really great shape now. And um, I'm gonna take a drive and make sure that as I put on load and it should go rich and the downstream sensor should be pretty stable, but it should be affected. And I shouldn't see that the rear oxygen sensor is doing something that makes me disbelieve the front. Because you know, if it's staying rich, even though the front one is stuck lean, uh, clearly you have an oxygen sensor that is not being responsive anymore. So hopefully the situation has been resolved. Uh, when the relearn is that severe, where it's that far off, it's already a confirmation to me that I was headed in the right direction. Um, so let's proceed to the next step and take a drive with it. You ever like to bin watch things? Up here is gonna be the most related playlist. Down here, you will see a video that YouTube thinks you like the best. I better get out of the way. Is there space for that stuff happening? And over here, you might, I might need to run away because you're going to poke me in the eye and subscribe. Get out there and work on something.